Welcome to the world of the striking Viking. Come along with a ride with me and find out that although governments don't get along, people do. To me, it's always about passion. I don't do anything halfway. I don't believe in, in mediocrity or doing what everybody else does. They say to, to, to live your life uh, according to what you want written on your tombstone. So on my tombstone, it would say hardcore. Ladies and gentlemen. Are you drawn to hot spots? Are you drawn to danger? Well, as opposed to Disneyland or a golf course, yeah. Now I'm going to keep going. Glenn Hagstead, a difficult man to introduce. There are many layers to this man. At the most basic, he can be described as a world-class martial arts champion, oh, yeah. the youngest Hell's Angels Sergeant of Arms, the only hostage to ever negotiate his own release. Glenn is a man who likes to live his life on the edge. So you're an adventurer, a risk taker, and an outlaw. <laughs> and a former hostage. And a former hostage, that's right. A man whose commanding presence cannot be denied by any who share the same room. Glenn Hegstead is unquestionably driven to a life of adventure. As a minor, Glenn was kicked out of his home at 13 years old. He grew up on the streets, floating in and out of juvenile halls, Salvation Armies, and even hitchhiked across the United States after reading Jack Kerouac's novel, On the Road. Living life on his own terms with a compelling urge to reject all forms of authority. Well, growing up in uh... In the 60s, uh, I was a typical rebel at home. I ended up getting the boot when I was 13 and uh, lived in the streets like quite a lot of people did in that time. But I'd watch the Hells Angels go by on their motorcycles and these big 20th century barbarians on their gleaming choppers. And when I was 13 years old, I know exactly what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to, one day I was gonna be a Hells Angel. At 20 years old, Glenn was the youngest member ever voted into the Hells Angels. Almost immediately, he was elected into the office of Sergeant of Arms. Many of Glenn's more infamous legends accumulated during the following few years. <laughs> uh, the guys that knew me well, my nickname was The Kid in the Club, but they also gave me the name Crazy. So I was known by, as Crazy Glenn for many years. So you know when a group like the Hells Angels gives you a name like Crazy? You might be a little bit out there. After running wild for almost seven years, Glenn began to silently question himself. Was this what he initially signed on for? But before he took action, he found himself convicted on a felony charge. He then was incarcerated and spent just shy of a year in a high security six by 10 foot cell. After Glenn was released from prison, he began working the most logical job an extra-large brawler who'd like to drink might obtain. A bar bouncer. After schmoozing with the wealthy clientele, he suddenly had more opportunities coming his way as a bodyguard and then as a professional collector. <laughs> well, when I worked as a collector, how would somebody describe me that, um, that I was hunting? Somebody they definitely wouldn't want to meet again under any circumstance. Glenn was never short on business. With a minimum job order of 20 grand, the money rolled in fast, but something was still missing in his life. It got old, it got old real quick. Now financially secure, Glenn initiated a diligent study into the martial arts with a passion that baffled the most dedicated teachers. Few understood what Glenn was training for was to save his own life. I'm a fourth degree black belt in judo. Third degree black belt in karate. Oh, yeah. First degree black belt in Shaolin Kung Fu. And the first degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Until recently, Glenn owned and operated the Coachella Valley Judo Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, teaching over 700 students across two decades. Martial arts was, uh, was always a thrill, especially when you're training for an event. 
state, state championships, national championships, international championships require so much focus. We all have this common bond, even though we're going to fight one another and do our best to defeat one another. It really ultimately becomes not just about fighting, but that just becomes a, a tool for, for more important lessons down the road, where martial arts becomes really the study of life. It was this training that allowed Glenn the health and mental durability to pursue his other passion, adventure traveling. Glenn extended those journeys on foot, by bicycle, in jeeps, by elephant back, river boats, and finally, by motorcycle. This journey, uh, we say when we, when we ride motorcycles, you hear motorcycle riders talk about, we don't just ride through the landscape, we merge with the landscape. I would liken the, the ride around the world as, as a journey into the landscape of humanity. It can happen in the light of day or the dead of night. An innocent person is abducted. Glenn Hegstad is on the adventure of a lifetime. It's one of those dream rides you never want to end. A year-long motorcycle trip from his home in Palm Springs, California. Adventure travel is really the essence of my life at this point. Through Mexico, Central America, and all the way to the tip of South America and back. I like to ride motorcycles, I like Latin America, and the tip seemed like a nice place to go to. <laughs> After traveling 5,000 miles through Mexico and Central America, he rode into Bogota, Colombia, and into the crossfire of a brutal 30-year civil war. A conflict financed by drug trafficking and hostage taking. It's the governments, and that goes to the theme of, of my, my travels is, you know, if governments can't, you know, if people can get along, why can't governments? When I met the people of the world face to face, shook hands with them, sat down and ate with them, we were family. I never had problems with anybody. The problems were always from some kind of government action, some kind of media hype to turn people against one another. He was stopped at a military style roadblock by a group of guerrillas armed with AK-47 rifles. It's just guns in my face. I had to say what was the worst moment of my life. That was that moment. The apparent leader pulled out a nine millimeter and pointed the gun at Glenn's face, firing off a round just above his head. Glenn was now at the mercy of the ELN, an infamous Colombian revolutionary group. During the next five weeks, Glenn was tortured and starved, not to mention the mind games they would play on him about false rescue attempts and even his own execution. I got a gun in my face. He initiated his Chinese meditation training and went on a hunger strike. The only way to take control was to sabotage my own health. I'm done with their timetable, we're gonna go on mine. Glenn then fabricated a case of prostate cancer, forcing nosebleeds and directing the blood onto his crotch. The only food that I've had is my own blood. Once Glenn had gotten to the point of complete vulnerability, the guerrillas then decided to turn him over to the Red Cross. It was, it was overwhelming for me, I couldn't digest it. This was how Glenn became the only hostage to initiate his own rescue. The FBI hostage release team said, you're going to California, you're going to be in the hospital. I said, no, I'm going to Argentina. And they said, you're serious, you want to keep going. We just thought you were crazy and, and, and didn't know what you want. I said, I am crazy, but I know what I want and I've got to keep going. If I don't continue, they win. The healing factor was going out and meeting the people of the world, look them in the eye, shake their hands, say howdy. My name's Glenn Hegstead and I'm from California. Came here to meet you and write about you. I think I'd always want to be remembered as somebody that had to find out for himself and that when he did, he shared that experience with as many people as he possibly could. And Probably one of the most important words is inspiration, to try to do something that affects other people's lives in a positive manner, whether it was teaching martial art or now to go out and, and see what the, real, what the world is really like and meet the people of the world and go back and tell people, hey, it's not like we, 
It's not like we saw in the media. It's not, it's not like we saw in the news. These people don't hate us. Uh, these people want peace just like we do. The one universal thing that every human being in the world wants, and that's respect. <laughs> in here what better time than now nothing stops the striking viking <laughs> Earth you know what i'm talking about yeah, I do.